Well, on behalf of Catella, a uh, warm welcome from my side, uh, just a couple of slides um, to, to sort of face <laughs> on the predictions. Uh, I think we are meanwhile in the ninth year of progress of going forward. And I can imagine that uh, not you, but also your chairman of the board get a little bit nervous and ask questions. And so um, I want to highlight some things just uh, in, a, in a shorter time period. Um, what we call here the so-called super cyclus. I use the German word super cyclus. This is what, what makes us really nervous. On one hand, uh, I think it's an extremely positive situation the last nine years after Mr. Lehman's case. On the other hand, we see that, of course, there is a volatile situation in all of these markets. It could be never three years, three years, three years. Now we are in the ninth year. And uh, funny enough, yesterday there was a big, for me, very important uh, presentation at the ECB Bank. And if you sit there with 100 risk managers and half of them ask Mr. Draghi, please, Mr. Draghi, increase your interest rate. And the real estate guy say, yes, please, too. And everybody looks at me and say, why? You are one of the big profits on that. And this brings you in that poorly not situation. How can they? start um, increasing the, the real estate, uh, sorry, the interest rate situation. Because on the other hand, I think uh, everybody in the room working in the real estate industry um, becomes more and more in a situation where you have to really ask every day not what you are doing, not what the others are doing. So a lot of uh, gambling things on lands uh, in Berlin and Frankfurt with a uh, long of durations of 35 years office, new office building, which we have to really ask on a situation. And this again, the body not on one hand, but also the sort of Damocles for all of us. Anyway, uh, one of our main predictions within Catella, uh, Swedish-based investment company, for those who never heard, will be a simple thing. We really expect that in Q3 next year, um, ECB, my beloved Italian guy uh, from the Frankfurt East End, will be starting the activities. Um, why do I mention this? Due to a simple, maybe a too simple, simplified uh, psychological effect. If you are the CE boss president and uh, you will go to pension end of September, you will ever all the time be punished as the guy who just cut the interest rate side. Just from a purely psychological effect, if you leave the ship, you have to shout and announce that, okay, now let's make a slightly move and increase in scenario. Maybe this is a scenario too simple or too academic, but I can imagine that he wouldn't be the guy who would be punished for all the times that you bring us in a situation which was positive for us as an industry, but they get it for all of us in, uh, in our saving account. And that. Anyway, um, boring things like bar charts, bar charts, and some pie charts. Honestly speaking, in the year 2015, um, in my real life, this was it, okay? So, well, yeah, I think two should be reduced. Got it. Unfortunately, um, it's jumped again. So what we see here is not that uh, it's not that part of it goes up and down. It's a, it's a typical plateau movement we faced in the situation, and especially this brings us uh, looking at the forecast from Catella. We bring we are in a situation that it will be the normal. I think four or three years ago, Charles Lang Lasalle questioned the five. The three is the new five. Um, now we are in a plateauing situation, and plateauing means in this case very positive because it's a stable evolution. So I don't like these statements because the market is drying out. Of course, if you see the portfolios in this market, and this is again, it's the end of a cycle. Every time you see you get one office building in Frankfurt and you get two buildings in Biberach or in Rüsselsheim North, which means it's a portfolio. You would never ever buy in Biberach North something, just speaking in general, of course, I love Biberach, no doubt, but you get the whole package, just the office tower, brand new in Frankfurt, plus these two others. And this is always the situation. And some of you also here are in a lot of uh, year end transaction negotiations. And you see now what's coming up to the market. So again, there will become also next year a lot of new properties on the market. New means new on your radar, not brand new. And this is again why I'm so optimistic, especially for our plateauing also next year. One of the massive learning curves for our industry was a quite a simple thing. And don't look at the crane at the left side, by the way, but we haven't ever built so less of a space the last 15 years, 50 years, sorry, 50 years, which means there was a huge lack of new development, which always bring us under pressure in the typical normal market situation. Now the market is booming, now it's speaking, and then one day later, the real estate society or the industry came with a lot of these other things. I don't see this. Um, so again, our activities become more and more uh, positive on one hand, but not due to the grim situation of your sentiment. Um, and to be honest and fair, one can also ask the question if their existing stock creates double-digit rental growth, existing stock 25-year-old buildings, 
Then you know what happened when the first guy came up and said, I have a brand new office building in the city center of Frankfurt, or Munich, Berlin. So as an aviation guy, I have sometimes my doubts, sitting on both sides of the table, to be fair, that a lot of these predictions um, for existing stock 25-year-old buildings um, got fitting written and they say, mm, this is a cool story. You are bringing with Mr. Axel on a duration of the next 24 years. And this is, again, where maybe we won't see some of these negative things. Positively speaking, no. As long as they are in the city center of Frankfurt, the good old ugly, dirty office uh, building will be refurbished uh, and converted into something called resi. And so the most dynamic part, especially here in Frankfurt, which is uh, uh, kind of the DNA for Frankfurt, right now is the, what we call the mixed-use properties. So of course, there are some single office towers, no doubt, for people, <coughs> but uh, this is the most growing uh, part <coughs> we see, especially when it comes to the developments, just go around one square kilometer a year, you see four of them. So for me, it's again, it's the next story where we shouldn't be too pessimistic that there is a kind of old building scenario for these drying out office activity. Um, I use this slide to a uh, simple advertising reason. On one hand, I'm really happy and I'm in a sober analytic situation course, as long as you and we are just in the city centers, no one whistles on no audience, don't leave the city center, Ex expect and pay high prices. We believe the core of our activities and the valuation effect when it comes to a market downturn is not massively in this area here, but it will be more massively, of course, in uh, things with and wherever when you go in the outskirts. And anyway, what we should always bear in mind, especially we touched on the chairman part of that, the whole land would be, which is uh, one of the globally, and this is again where it comes from Catella's uh, experience, this is from the international money, the most undervalued region in Germany. And this is again following your gut feeling on, I don't know, Schalke, but maybe Gelsenkirchen, Bochum, and Mülheim an der Wohnung and see what the expectation of prices are, just by seeing the number crunching thing, so just by size. This is the biggest market in Europe, in Germany, or sorry, in Germany, and uh, it will be getting more and more on the way down. And this again, where I see more international capital and market capital coming to this region than to Hamburg and Frankfurt, just by seeing the relation, of course. Anyway, all positive situations there. Um, no, no, no doubt that the, the office space and in total, of course, would be number one for all of us. There might be a uh, slightly um, drop on the retail sector, to be honest and fair. It's much more discussion thing going on. But I see as a valuation guy, it couldn't be a solution if you bring a five or 10 year old office, uh, no, office shopping center here in Frankfurt to um, convert it into something called <coughs> misuse, reduce the, uh, reduce the um, fashion, damn Oberbegleitung replaced by uh, COA 1, COA 2, and uh, Asian food, and fusion food, and so the food and beverage thing might be a technical advantage, of course, from a valuation approach uh, to decline that, and which means I have to devaluate that, of course, on a 10-year lease with a fashion company versus a uh, food and beverage thing for two years. We have to devaluate the value. And this is, again, what we all have, should ask, is this really a solution? Anyway, I wouldn't touch the point today, but uh, think about that. Of course, it's business, by the way. And as long as investors are willing to pay a higher price for that mixed use, that it's okay. But again, risk increase in all these changing things. We're talking more from a historical perspective. Um, okay, uh, next thing is uh, using the RCA because they create fantastic, fantastic maps. You know all these dots, uh, maybe here, <coughs> and here, and this is again here. This again where we face uh, always the situation, the, the uh, divide between the top five, uh, so-called rest of Germany. Um, meanwhile, we're in a situation that uh, it's close to half-half. Um, it's uh, is in, in top five, and uh, especially this year, and of all prediction will be that there is a slightly decline in the secondary and third tier locations. And this is again linked to a situation beside all these headlines. I love the headline in Thomas Daly in the morning, or probably you also heard that, I will say, Fantastic investments in <coughs> books are no doubt. But on the other hand, if I count all these investments together, it's just a really dominant minor part. And I mentioned the situation with the portfolio transactions, books are is part of the portfolio. Don't get nervous and don't get nuts when you see the headlines that obviously there is a huge, huge shift into secondary and sort C and E locations, as we call it in Germany. Um, it's not that massive as it seems. It's more public relations grip based. Don't get me wrong, there are fantastic opportunities, no doubt, absolutely, in Sikau, in Kremlin, in Lea, no doubt. But again, it's not that massive thing, so we see that the 
secondary activities uh, become more and more uh, on a minor priority. So the dominant factor, of course, is still the top five uh, in Germany, or seven, depending on the position. I know everybody loves, from our street, loves that slide. Some, meanwhile, we asked that slide. It shows you the 10 years treasury bond evolution. Going back to the so called new economy, but might be, do you take a 10 years treasury bond or going in a city office? <coughs> Today the world's changing dramatically, and uh, simple, simple example if there is a real shift between Frankfurt and Freiburg, around 150 basis points between a city and a secondary city or location, then of course the analysts say it's a healthy situation. Um, on, to be honest, unfair, this is uh, slightly shrinking. And, and especially when it comes to the change of the interest rate scenario, of course, we are still in an absolutely comfortable situation. You won't get nervous when you see the red banner of MTV or CNN that Mr. Draghi starts increasing interest rate. It will take years. Speaking more rational, looking at the crystal ball, by the way, but it will take years that we reach this ranking. Um, I think most of you already know our Catella bubble dream. Um, this is where we are right now, sitting in a bus, accompanying clients or, or investors from Finland, from wherever we are. And uh, they are looking for that. Wiesbaden, Duisburg, Dortmund, secondary, strong, blah, blah, blah. By the end of the day, two thirds of them act here. Munich, Berlin. Again, the simple story on we have to learn our lessons if there is a market downturn. The exit strategy becomes more, more harder in, in the Duisburg rather than uh, more punishing in Duisburg rather than in Munich. This is the reason why we accept higher prices. I wouldn't say extremely, but we expect higher prices. This is the exit philosophy for most of these investors right now. No doubt, fantastic evolutions, fantastic investments in Weimar, Chemnitz, wherever, but it's not the dominant part for the international. And this is again, I won't, again, I won't bore you with all these uh, details, but it show you, shows you really some interesting things. You don't find that <coughs> the five in my world, which is probably the A building, whatever. Now we are touching around the three point something, and uh, I think we heard the rumors on the Expo Royale and also last week's, that in Munich, uh, there's Munich here, the 2.7 slash there will be one with 2.5, whatever this means beyond that, cap rate or interest rate or adverse or whatever. But uh, we're touching now a situation where, again, you and me were nervous because we never ever reached that, my, my experience, my lifetime at that level. Positively speaking, this is exactly the level Frankfurt, uh, Paris, London, and parts Madrid stands for the last 20 years. So, on one hand, we always look on these cool London and say, we want to be like the London. Now we are like the London, we And uh, Interesting question maybe for the discussion on. I don't see any huge backdrop when it comes to a market downturn on that. So there will be my my best guess to be honest. I don't see that there will be a shift into something called five plus whatever. <coughs> just for the core segment. Hold on. Uh, but we can have a discussion on that. Interestingly speaking, you see that we have the uh, meat price reform today or end of next week. Just to give you some things, because Resi is of course on the trial list of a lot of these investors. Uh, let's take the case of what's it Frank here? I would say Berlin. Berlin, um, in the last decade, you see uh, a drop in population growth, so negative. Meanwhile, it rocket up to um, a scenario where two thirds of all the international money will love the capital of Germany. On the other hand, we as German have, can ask the question, why is there, or is there a strategic shift into something called more employment, uh, not just the startup story? Again, we can touch this too, but it shows you really dramatically the shift. On one hand, we have a huge population growth in Germany, positively speaking, in the agglomeration areas. On one hand, and the correlation to that is, of course, that the real estate prices go in another dimension or level we never saw before. For me as an analyst, simple sober, supply, demand, positive. I'm not that guy looking for an affordable house in Frankfurt right now, to be honest. And uh, you see that, again, the rest of the sector, what's going up here the last two years when it comes to these Average price, um, you see that especially end of this year, where we expect a slightly higher situation, but not that size. It was the Venovia case, by the way. This was just a sample, but we are in a stable situation with about 15 to 80 billion transaction volume commercial. It's not that if you buy a hard <coughs> Same situation here, uh, but this is again in contradiction to the office situation. We saw, we see more activities, or traditionally more activities, in the secondary locations, uh, expectation Venovia. 
but the roughly years we see more activities from investors and housing out of the big five, or the big uh, seven, rather than uh, to the so-called secondary and third locations. Some slides on Europe, just a simple one. Um, again, um, it's not so impressive as it seems. Our prediction will be, uh, maybe, I'm not sure, if cost and law will work between Christmas and New Year's Eve on more transactions. This is always the gore up from Alice, by the way. It could be also slightly a little bit higher, but again, we don't see a new record in, in, in Europe. Uh, what concerns me besides these things is that the markets, meanwhile, are dominantly synchronized. So you don't have, out of the paper discussion, by the way, you don't have any diversification effect when you uh, make investment in Oslo, Madrid, and Russell. This is, again, where the whole markets are really at the same speed and the same cycle situation. And this brings us, of course, in a discussion maybe later on, what happens when something comes to a downturn. Do I sell Oslo and move into Madrid? Hmm. I don't think so. This is again where we should uh, think about that more in a way. Uh, yeah, to my British friends. No, 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 of course not. Of course not. And uh, to be honest and fair, of course nobody. I'm afraid this is where the presentation has to finish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you know, you know where I spend my holidays. And, and, uh, okay, so I spend a lot. Of I use the currency exchange with the counseling. Uh, anyway, no, but uh, but uh, I think this is of course this is the the, the massive. In fact, called Brexit sit and wait postponing decisions. No doubt in Q1 next year, whatever happened the next two weeks with Ms. May and the whole situation with the heart of Brexit or whatever, we will have definitely uh, uh, a slightly downwards activities in British slash London market mentality. But this is again, it's for me, more postponement effect rather than strategic of uh, London. Definitely. It's not allowed that London will be sorry that Thomas Financial Center number one. That's what uh, financial number one, uh, financial center number one. So this is, uh, of course, driven to the diversification of Germany for the centralized situation. But uh, uh, maybe I think in two years' time or three years' time, the, the good old ranking, Richard, will be UK number one and then followed by Germany, just my size. <coughs> I have, I'm, more, I'm more positive on the Brexit case. Uh, but again, don't get nervous when you see a huge drop in protection volume in Q1 next year, beside all these small things. Uh, well, so, oh, sorry, oh, I'm not written, Barcelona obviously is leaving, but uh, you see that just some, some, some general um, um, comments on vacancy rate, wherever you go, close, nearly wherever you go, you see the kind of thing. To be honest and fair, if you look behind this, all these uh, average things, you see in most of the cities, like Berlin, Frankfurt, Hamburg, Munich, Germany, you see that uh, one third, 40% are converted old, old office into a new resi. So these melting in the sun, effect like the vacancy rates are extremely down. That's you, uh, it's a situation where it's, it's driven on one hand of a huge demand from economic cycle, no doubt. On the other hand, the shift uh, from uh, office into resi is also uh, implemented in here. Um, prime brand and especially the outlook, we are still optimistic because <coughs> I can't really make it measurable. That coming from an OEC figure, GDP growth Europe in average 2.2 to 2.0. Yeah, it's negative. But it's still two point. Maybe there will be 1.8 in March, no doubt. But again, it's the headline seems to be negative. But realistically speaking, companies hire people. I have no idea on the salary yet. They really explode, as it seems sometimes. They sit closer together, so the demand for more office space is limited, no doubt. But from the economic approach, the economic framework, we are still in an absolutely fantastic situation, no doubt. And uh, again, last comments on that. Um, there is, of course, still a large amount of uh, the capital. Just for you, um, 10 years ago, we get for one fundraised euro, we get one brick. Today, we get we have to take three fundraised euros, and we get just one brick. So this is, again, a capital market uh, phenomenon, which is, in our lifetime, maybe the most challenging thing for us. So too much money around, I have to say. And again, this is also one of the main reasons why Mr. Draghi or ECB, it's not Mr. Draghi, it's ECB, of course, or directors, should start in, starting in another direction. Otherwise, it becomes more and more a currency etching thing with Mr. Trump, of course, and of course uh, with the monster. Anyway, expected yield compression further going on. It will stop at average 3.15, so it will come to an end, end of this year. I don't see, except for some exotic, stupid investments in Q1, I, I see this was it now. Hopefully, I'm not here two years ago. Uh, office and retail, the most prominent uh, activities, rising up volumes still in, in a situation which are fantastic for <coughs> us. 
uh, housing sector extremely increasingly on the radar of investors. Uh, you see a lot of new companies uh, going into that market with maybe another price expectation, and especially when it comes from external uh, parties, international one. I know the Chinese don't like that statement, but uh, we are one of the most undervalued markets for the rest of the sector globally. Don't mention this if you leave the building to the people on the street, but this is again where from the rational, academically driven, capital, capitalism driven uh, investment strategy, Berlin, Hamburg, Frankfurt too, most undervalued com uh, uh, cities worldwide. Comparing, comparing, uh, comparing agglomeration areas, not in average countries, of course. Um, short run, of course, definitely healthy situation. Why it's came some short term. We have to look also on the situation of the uh, interest rate, uh, the hike, uh, ECB. I expect, we expect in Q3, during summer, after summer, there will be some signals before we will go to pension. And of course, the inflation and the cautious lending suggests whatever this means, by the way. Um, we believe that this will, it's more a gradual slowdown, cooling down scenario rather than an upper burst situation. Saying this, over coming more now to the discussions going on, so what does Catella recommend right now for their own funds? You will see, you'll get all these slides later on, but not this slide. Uh, this is Catella's own investment strategy for average. Um, what we're doing with our um, unbalanced activities, uh, overweight, resi, <laughs> that's probably resi and resi, simple thing, but uh, it's not like projection. Um, and the positives, we are still positive on office, but observe flexible workspace evolution. I'm not contradiction to WeWork, but I struggle with the philosophy of their, let's say, let's say stable income streams for the next five to 10 years. Um, hotel, uh, that's the logistics, so no surprise. What we are select, where we are selective, especially retail out of town, not retail in total, because you see a lot of asset management things coming up the next two to three years, definitely. If you are trying to make an asset management activities in the retail sector, it becomes more and more positive for you, by the way. Um, so forget all these negative things on re uh, retail, you find a lot of opportunities if you try to and create value on that. And of course, these three, uh, uh, third, uh, so third tier, tiers location. Um, Important to saying this because this were internally hard discussions. Valuation, it's mutual. Mutual to a more, let's say, a technical thing. Wherever you go in Europe, and you try to make comparison between 2018, one property to the same property 10 years ago, wherever you go in Europe, Oslo, Naples, Greece, all the book values are overrun now. <coughs> the formerly high price in 07 or 08. So this is again, I wouldn't say we struggle with that, but the valuations, and especially when it comes to the existing, uh, to the new developments, we see a level which is uh, to be discussed, to be honest. And I love these storytelling phenomena of these days, anyway. Cycle still positive, sentiment still positive, nevertheless, it's a blood showing situation. So don't get nervous when it drops a little bit next time. And so again, simple thing. Well, the second slide, are the real estate markets facing a change? Yeah, of course, they're facing a change, so it will be a cooling down scenario. Some of you <coughs> follow the Game of Thrones. What is the family? It's the Stark, House of Stark, right? Which is coming definitely, but I think we should focus more on the fundamentals rather than these discussions going on. Uh, whether it's ex Boreal or these headlines on N N N TV or CNN, uh, we are still in a positive environment. Thanks a lot. <coughs>